I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, selling a product and selling a story on your site. Oh, I'm turning up. Uh, Hanson mentioned I'm Kellis. I'm an art director on the Magento design team with uh, Hanson and Josh here. Uh, every once in a while, I get to hang out with John and Daniel and Keith and the rest of the gang out in Austin. They're all a lot of fun. It's our lovely legal slide. I want to start off by introducing you guys to Cecil Rhodes. Now, Cecil Rhodes owned a mining company around the turn of the 20th century. And like a lot of people who own mining companies, they had a lot of little holes in the ground with a lot of little rocks inside. And most of these little rocks didn't have a whole lot of value. These ones in particular had a little bit of industrial use, but not a whole lot of real world value to speak of. When you polish them up, they started to look a little bit nicer, still not a whole lot of value. So Cecil decided to do something about this. In 1938, he hired an ad agency to start telling a story about these little rocks. And when the ad agency told the story, they transformed the rock from just being a simple little rock into being the symbol of love and commitment between, that's everlasting between two people. And now, you pay two months' salary to get one. <laughs> this demonstrates the power of storytelling. And the value of, product, of a product is in its story. And the better the story you tell around your products, the more valuable your products become. So this leads to, there are a lot of different ways to tell a story, right? But there are two basic parts to any story that we want to tell. One is what you say, and the other is how you say it. And when you put these two things together, <clears throat> they work together to create the value of your product in some cases, they create the value of your product entirely. In other cases, they take the existing value and raise it up to some various degree. So that leads us to a really interesting question. What makes a great story if we want to tell this story? And the place to start with any really great story is narrative. Now, I realize narrative can sound a little abstract. <laughs> this can sound a little philosophical or esoteric, but in reality, Narrative is a pretty well-established concept. You probably don't have to reach too far for a narrative around your product. There are some very well-established ones. There's a list up here. I can give you a few examples of like a problem solved. How many of you guys in this room have a Mophi case on your phone? One, at least. Oh. For, for you guys who aren't familiar, uh, Mophi makes a makes a phone case that charges your phone when you run out of batteries. And I'm sure throughout the course of this conference, you guys will be on your phone. I know I am. I have one of these, and I probably use it at least two or three times a week. They tell a very simple, succinct story through their site about how they solve a problem with more power. They just came out with a new case that actually adds storage capacity to your phone as well the first rechargeable battery with local built-in storage. Very simple, very succinct storytelling. Another really great example here is the Daily Gromit. Now, the Daily Gromit tells a story right on their homepage. We launch undiscovered products and help them to succeed. We call them grommets. Grommets aren't just things. Grommets are products with a purpose invented by people with stories. They tell you right up front exactly what they're about. And as you click through, the, through their site, you get to see these examples of these really small scale entrepreneurs who come up with a really great idea, but maybe they're not incredibly savvy at marketing it, so they get with Gromit, and Gromit starts listing their products. Now, I think this is a really relevant concept for a lot of people who run e-commerce stores, because there's a tendency to think that you can't tell a story around reselling other people's products, right? That the tendency is to think that if I have a brand, I can tell a story about that. But I'm not doing. But if you're not doing that, if you're reselling other people's products, how do you tell that story? And what the Gromit does is, they their concept is a, is. A, to ha is to curate, is to have a curated narrative. They sell a lot of different products, and the story they tell is, why did we pick this product over this other one? Why are we bringing these different things together? And almost every product on their site has some little story that goes along with it. 
some very succinct purpose, like mist. It's a really great little device. It's got a sprayer on top that sprays cleaning solution onto your tablet or onto your screen. And then the outside of it is a microwave fiber that you use to clean it off all in one. And almost every product on their site is like this. And they've weaved all of these products into this great narrative that tells the purpose of their site. Now, Chopard. Chopard is a fantastic example of a lifestyle narrative. Uh, Chopard makes watches and jewelry, and a luxury watch is the ultimate example of a lifestyle narrative because almost everyone has a cell phone now, and everyone's cell phone has a clock on it. You don't need a watch to tell time. You wear a watch because you want to see your watch, you want to look at your watch, and in Chopard's case, because you want to tell a story about yourself by the things you wear and create a narrative about yourself through their product. The Chopard, in their case, I clicked around their site a little bit. Most of their watches range eight to ten thousand dollars, maybe go up to forty, fifty thousand dollars in some cases. Um, obviously, not something that you just keep on yourself to tell time. So, with these narrative examples, I rolled through, did a little Googling, came up with half a dozen in an hour or two. But I'm sure all of us could spend a little time at uh, later on after this, come up with half a dozen more and just look through the list and think about how does, where does my company fit into one of these narratives? What is, how does the thing I'm selling fit into a narrative? And as soon as you start thinking about, oh, I want to create an ideal experience with my product. I want to better the world with my product. I want to create an idea of how my product fits into people's lives. That's the spark that gets you going to start telling your story. Now, there's a specific challenge that I'm just kind of guessing we all have because we're in e-commerce. I'm assuming we're all at an e-commerce because we're at Imagine. And telling a story is one thing, but telling a story around selling something is a little bit different. Because we have to change up from just telling a story into selling a story, right? We have to create a narrative that ends in a transaction. Because if our story doesn't eventually lead to this, we don't get, we don't get, uh, we don't get a conversion, we don't get a sale, and our story fails. And if that keeps going on long enough, our company fails along with it. So we have to tell a story that ends up with a very specific goal in mind. Now, I got my first experience with this a, quite a while back. I won't date myself too much, but I worked with American Apparel on their online store, and they had a fantastic brand narrative. Like, people came to their site because they wanted to see these big, beautiful images and because they wanted to see a part of the story and see how it fits into their life. And they would come here and they loved the story and they would get it on the home page. But the challenge was if they didn't come through the home page, they missed this narrative entirely. If instead they came through a product detail page, they end up losing the story because they come here and see product on a plain white background and miss the story, not be especially enthused about the product, and most often as not, they would just bounce off if they came straight here. Now, there are many, many ways to shoot products in a studio that tell a story. This is not one of them. <laughs> and, but this is a very common method for merchants to use because Shooting on a plain white background, you can shoot a ton of product really quickly and push it to your site in a very small amount of time. And that's exactly why American Apparel did this. But they were missing out. This was the common user flow that people would try and go through uh, to get a story and eventually get down to a product. They would come in with through the entry point up here. They get the story through the home page, and from there, we just kind of hope and pray that they would click on a uh, category listing, find a product they like, and click through to buy it as a uh, path to purchase. And this is also very, very common for, uh, for a lot of merchants. I think this is probably what we, you would think of as the traditional path. I think Keith alluded to it in, in a little bit in several different ways as he was talking through screens he designed. Um, but this is, this is one way to do it. it it's a, it presents a challenge, but we can start to think about things a little bit differently. 
and maybe think about a little bit different solution. And I found one really interesting example in Stance. Now, Stance sells these really funky socks. And they have a certain uh, market that really loves the style of these socks and the story they tell about the person who wears them. They have a really fantastic brand narrative. And they sell the exact same way that American Apparel does in the slide I just showed you, where someone goes through the homepage, through a category, and down to a product. Now, this is one way they sell. But what I think is really interesting is this is not the only way that they sell now. Uh, I got the inside scoop on this because Stance uses Magento, and we have a relationship with them. And they uh, shared with us a really interesting concept that they're utilizing and their marketing and their strategy towards where they want to drive traffic. They told us that they want to consider any page on their site to be a potential entry point for a new user. So what they do, how this works, is they put ads up on social media. And generally, Facebook tends to be very, very targeted towards a certain type of person. And when a person clicks, they follow this path. They go down to the site, and now Stans can direct them into one of any entry points they want to on their site. Now here's the kicker. Since Stance considers any page to potentially be an entry point, what they started doing is creating entirely new entry points for their site. And these new entry points, they have a new design, they have a new layout, and they have somewhat of a different purpose this one is Stance Fusion. And it's built to tell a story about a very specific line of product. And as a customer comes into the site through this new guided path, this is the only entry point that they see as they come through. And we can get into a little bit of a philosophical discussion about this. But for them, this entry point now becomes the home page for all intents and purposes because of their point of view as they come into the site. So now their narrative experience of the product is changed completely. They're guided towards something that's much more relevant, which is ideally what target advertising is supposed to do, right? When I go to Facebook, because it knows so much about me, it should give me things that are relevant to me. And Stance has found a way to carry that through uh, into an actual execution. So they come through, they see this is the home page to them. Uh, Stance Fusion works on building the story and telling it and uh, creating value and then leads down to a path to purchase. So Stance Fusion, this is a really incredible narrative way to tell a story. And uh, it's part of the site, but it's got this radically different format than the rest of the site. It's designed to create a really engaging way to tell their narrative. And uh, they know their audience. They give them what they want. And uh, it helps a customer to understand how this specific type of product fits into their life. They, in this new format, they really utilize how to tell a story. And part of this is they use scale to create hierarchy. Um, I know we talked a little bit about the idea of, not, sorry, not in this presentation. I believe in Keith's presentation, we talked a little bit about the idea of how, of going from mobile up to a desktop. And on a mobile device, things tend to be very simple. And this works as a really great format for telling a story. It creates a very simple path for people to walk through. There's not much on this page for you to get lost through. It just walks you through in a very simple and succinct way. Uh, I think a lot of athletes, when they think about, oh, socks, <laughs> why, would I, why would I wear funky socks? But they come here, and Stance shows you this, this is what you can get away with. This is how you're going to get attention. This is how it's going to play into your narrative when you get on, on the basketball court. This is how you're going to show your personality and get attention. And this is exactly what somebody who comes here for this kind of product wants. They also have a very inventive way of calling out all their product details through this format. Um, I like to think of typography as the visual tone of voice of your site. It kind of gives people a little bit of a hint to what you mean and a little bit of a secondary layer. 
And this alternative experience that they've created supports that very nicely. And of course, all of this eventually leads you to uh, a place where you can see product that's included in the story, and you can click through to buy it. So they've created a narrative, they've created a new way to tell their story, and they've achieved what they're looking to achieve, which is a way to sell it. Now, Stance is a little bit of an overachiever because they came up with Fusion, and that was a new way to tell their story, but they didn't stop there. They started creating other ways on their site. They started creating multiple entry points with these different formats in order to start telling their story in different ways. Some were uh, centered around social media or editorial, blogging, but uh, they've come up with many different ways to do this. So what Stance has essentially done is if what we're talking about is what you say and how you say it, creating the value of their product, they've kept the narrative the same through all, all these different entry points, but they've created new layers of different ways to tell their story. And with each one they add to it, they create a new way to raise the value of their product as well. Now, this really kind of symbolizes a turning point for how we can think about what we do with e-commerce. Because instead of thinking, well, if I want to redesign my site, I have to scrap it and start over, now you can start to redesign around the site you already have and start to think about it as a foundation for the future that you can design on top of and transform your site from what it's going to be today into what it's going to be six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, and help it to slowly evolve into something new. So. Uh, there's no reason that any of us in this room can't start taking on this idea, and we should because lots of merchants are taking on these ideas in a lot of different ways. Alex Nani has a fantastic story, which you're going to hear about through the course of Imagine. But they created Wear and Share up here. I know my laser pointer is pretty dim. They created Wear and Share as a new alternative experience, and notice. It's in the main navigation, it's a little bit buried. It's actually a little bit hard to find. But that's okay because of the fact that they're not trying to drive traffic through it through the home page or really even through the main navigation. Wear and share is meant to drive traffic through Instagram. Now the way it works is you take a selfie wearing some product from Alex and Ani and you post it up to Instagram and you hashtag Alex and Ani on it. And their social media team looks at Instagram and they go, hey, somebody posted a really great photo. So they take that, bring it up to Wear and Share, and now uh, they have users telling their story for them. And Alex and Ani can post, up, can post your photo. Now you can look at your photo. You can see the way other people are, posting, are wearing the same thing. You can look at what they're doing, and when you click on one of these, it shows a bigger version of the image, and now it's also showing pictures of new products that are included in, in the picture that you can click on to buy. So they create this narrative, get their users to talk about it, and it all follows through to being able to buy a new product. My last example here, and this is really over the top, is uh, Gantt. They've created this eight-part webisode series called About a Girl starring uh, the actor on the left, his name is Andrew Jenks. He wrote, directed, and stars in uh, these eight three-minute videos. And if you hadn't guessed, they're about a girl. <laughs> but as you scroll down the page, what Gantt is about is having uh, Andrew Jenks wear the product in all of these videos. And as you watch one, you can see what he's doing and uh, how, what his narrative is. And as you scroll down the page to see the next video, there's uh, a shot of Andrew Jenks and a couple of products that he's wearing in the video that you can then click on to buy. So to wrap up these ideas about storytelling, what you say and how you say it is creating the value of your product. We want to work on narrative and, and telling the story, and not just how we tell the story, but how we sell the story and how we deliver it and keep thinking about new ways that we can tell our story and layer 
uh, one new story on top, one new way to tell a story on top of the other to, uh, to bring our site forward. And the value of your, because the value of the product, your product is in its story. And the better the story you tell, the more valuable your product becomes. So hopefully, you can think about these ideas and move forward, and you can take your site and keep polishing it and refining it and adding new ideas to it to take your site from a rock and try and transform it into a diamond. That's it. Thank you.